He admitted that he cut his finger off. But he does say it to Amber, too. Remember, we played this one four times, and Mr. Depp denied that he was actually saying, the day that I chopped my finger off. Let's hear it one more time. Okay, here we go. I'm talking about Australia, the day that now I chopped my finger Now we're talking about Australia. Off. Okay. The day that I chopped my finger off. So let's fast forward to March uh -huh. 23rd, 2015. After just a few weeks in Australia, Mr. Depp has a finger injury, no doubt about that. He comes home, he gets what they call a soft cast on it, which you heard his treating physician and our experts say, doesn't have sides on it, but it's a hard plaster cast over the top of his Don't finger. Don't go the June be wielded like a club. Oh my. And they got in an argument when Ms. Hurd discovered that oh he was no. having an affair with a woman named Rochelle that had been going on before the wedding, after the wedding, <laughs> and she confronted him about that. No surprise there, they got in a huge oh, argument. No. At some point in the argument, he bolted up the stairs. Now, Travis McGivern claims that she threw a Red Bull can at him. She and Whitney Enriquez say that absolutely didn't happen. Oh my but God. even if you believe Mr. McGivern, Please. at some point, Mr. Depp, went up the stairs, he went to the fight. This is the man uh -huh. that claims he always wants to run, and this time he had his bodyguard with him. So he could have just walked out the door, but he runs up the stairs, yeah. and Miss Enriquez is standing on the precipice of the stairs, and Amber admitted that when she thought he was about to push her down the stairs, admitted. as he's grabbing admitted. at her and Amber with his free hand and trying to club them with the cast of him, <laughs> that she said, I punched him square in the face. I punched him square in the face, and they showed you a picture of the shiner that she had, that, that, that Mr. Depp had. Ms. Hurd oh doesn't deny God. that. They're trying to say she's the abuser for defending herself and her sister from this animal who's running at them. This person it's that they an animal, boys. couldn't possibly have it's done an this because Lord. he had a hurt finger, yet he could have done this. This is what Mr. McGivern said was rearranging her closet. Oh, my God. I don't know what you all do when you rearrange your closets, but I hope it doesn't look like this. This is throwing Ooh. a clothing rack down the stairs. This is not Personally, this, this is what he did to rearrange Ooh. your closet with his hurt finger that he couldn't possibly have hit Miss Heard with, they claim. That in and of itself, that destruction of property, even if he hadn't hit her that night, that's abuse. Imagine being married to someone and walking on eggshells so thick that you don't know if you set them off if that's what's going to happen. Wouldn't it be so thin? That's abuse. And it's disgusting. But sometimes he would apologize. He'd say, I can't express how sor sorry I am for having stooped so low as to have spewed such vicious untruths for the sole purpose of hurting you. Grievous error, shameful. So he went in these cycles. Mm -hmm. He went in these cycles. She thought he could change for good. And when it was good, it was really good. Yeah. But then sometimes things like December 15th came around where she remembers him chasing her in the kitchen. She remembers him shoving her two or three times and sending her toppling over a chase lounge and saying, do you really want to go again, tough guy? And she looked at him and he balled up his fist, leaned back and headbutted her square in the nose and pounded her head with the back of his fist so she couldn't breathe on that bed that we're gonna see in a second, where she was suffocating in this pillow top and she said, this is when I thought I was gonna die. He's gonna kill me and he doesn't even know what he's doing because he's out of his mind. And these are the pictures that they claim. I don't know what they're claiming. I don't know if they're claiming she painted on the bruise. Oh, you oh, weren't hurt shit. badly enough, so oh, therefore you're shit. making it up. Look under her eye. And again, oh, my God. their theory is that all of this is a lie. All of this was some grand hoax. Yeah. If this were a hoax, ladies and gentlemen, she'd have worse injuries than that. She'd really do it up. She took pictures as they existed I gotta when she could at the time of abuse. And yet Ms. Vasquez has the nerve to say, well, why didn't she videotape so an incident of abuse? What, if she's being hit, she's supposed to somehow grab a video camera with one hand while she's defending herself with another hand? You heard her in one of the audio tapes talking about when she hit him as he was trying to barge at her and she got her feet caught under a door as he's coming after her. And of course, as Don Hughes testified to, victims, of course, of control like this, they do try to, to appease their abusive partner and apologize for things that aren't their fault. So as you're coming at me, Johnny, and you push a door into me, and I have to hit you to get away to protect myself, 
Yeah, she did apologize for that because that's the cycle of violence. That's what victims do. Yet, yet they continue to blame the victim. There's no evidence she painted on that bloody lip. And again, if we're talking about a hoax, the next day she went on James Corden and they say, well, you can't see any injury there, so it must not have been. She would have to be <laughs> the dumbest person in the world to say, I'm going to commit an abuse hoax, but let's, let's do it the day before I go on national television. <laughs> let's do it the day before. But you heard Melanie Iglesias, her makeup artist, testify in great detail. And I didn't even understand half the terms about makeup that she was using. But she testified in great detail about exactly what she did to cover up those bruises. People on TikTok dig the red lipstick it wrong. that she put to cover up the busted lip. You heard the testimony of that from yeah, a neutral party did. who said exactly what she did. She talked about how she looked at the color wheel to neutralize the bruising. Uh huh. They claim it was just an accidental headbutt. Well, no accidental headbutt rips out hair. They claim, oh, Miss Heard somehow used a pocket knife to cut this portion of the bed out to stage this. Well, I don't know if that's a pocket knife or not, but the only testimony in this trial about a pocket knife is Whitney Enriquez saying that Mr. Depp carried a pocket knife in his pocket. So it was Johnny's day. knife. We all know where that, if it is a pocket knife, where that came from. That's right. Johnny was going to stab her. I think the most telling, one of the most telling things about oh. this incident is the text he sent to David Hurd, Amber's dad, two weeks later, where he says, I meant to send this to you a week or so ago. I'm sending it to you now. And he says, I forget if it's a text or an email, but you can look at the X580. He says, yes, I fucked up and went too far in our fight. Because as a result of that fight and the bruises that all of her family saw, the fam family refused to go to the Bahamas with them for Christmas. The family refused to go to the Bahamas for uh -huh. Christmas, and on that trip to the island, Mr. Depp kept passing out, and every time he passed out, he would dump a glass of wine on Amber's lap, and she didn't like that, and she yelled at him, okay. and because, because it was in front of his kids, he got up. This is the one where Tara Roberts took the video, but she didn't show you the closet, she didn't show you the bathroom, and Amber says, while holding my neck, this is in the closet. He said, I'll fucking kill you if you ever speak to me like that in front of my kids again because you embarrass me. And then he took her into the bathroom and she said, but this time he grabbed my vagina, shoved his fingers inside me, but through my bathing suit and held me there and asked me if I was so fucking tough. And then she ran out. Oh of the my house. God. And to keep him away from her, that's when. He claims, and she, she admits, she threw something at him. She didn't know what it was. Uh -huh. It's been testimony. It was a can of mineral spirits that she claimed that, that, that hit Mr. Depp. And Mr. Depp is somehow the victim in that encounter? Mm -hmm. Come on. We talk about the, plane, the train ride to Asia. We, you saw the pictures taken before they got on the train ride where Mr. Depp has the same shadowing under his eye that he does in the allegedly abusive picture. But in that picture, he held Mr. Or in that train ride, talk about a honeymoon, he held her up against the wall while she was trying to get his arms off her neck and he was squeezing her neck against the railway car and at some point I pulled the lapel of his shirt, he rips the shirt off and she woke up with the shirt around her neck and a giant knot in the back of her head. Let's fast forward to uh, her birthday party just very quickly. He experienced terrible financial news that night. He came over, they got into a fight, there's been conflicting evidence about that, but Amber said, I hit the side of the desk, he chest bumped me, he fell to the floor, I fell to the floor, and when I got back up, he held me down by the shoulders, and that's when he grabbed her by the pubic bone and pushed her down. Oh and you my God. Ms. Vasquez showing her her interrogatory answers, where mm -hmm. she details a lot of this, and saying, nowhere in there does it say that. And Ms. Hurd says, it actually does on page 64, and pointed out to Ms. Vasquez exactly where it says that. That's abuse, it's sexual abuse. But we all know what Mr. Depp does when okay. he experiences terrible financial news, or terrible news. He experienced terrible news that night on the way to the birthday party where his, both of his bodyguards have testified that he was either visiting his sick mom or getting a birthday present for Amber. Uh -huh. And then we know what happens the day after his mother passed away on May 21st, 2016. And we're gonna skip through a little bit of this now. And Elaine will talk about this in the context of the counterclaim. But these are the pictures afterwards. These are pictures that now they're claiming that, well, they must have been fake. There's been no testimony in this case that these pictures were faked. There's been no testimony that the marks you see on Amber's face, including this mark yes, with a straight was. line from below her eye to the top of her temple, that it, 
lines up directly with a phone. There's been no testimony that those are faked. Mr. Depp went through the house. He destroyed pictures of her friends. That's abuse. Property destruction like that, it, in and of itself, is abuse. He destroyed her office. He destroyed her friend Rocky Pennington's uh, preparation for the bead show that she was having. She's knocked it down. He spilled wine in the hallway that you'll notice the police denied. Oh, there was no spilled wine in the hallway. Well, even Isaac Baruch testified that he saw this in the hallway. We saw the tape, and man. And said she never sent things to her medical providers. Whip. These are the texts that she sent to her nurse, Erin Filati, the night that it happened. Uh huh. These are pictures of her in the courtroom. We're not going to play this right now, but you can listen to this. This is that terribly disturbing text of him in July of 2016 threatening to cut himself and telling, you cut me or I will. You all remember playing that. It was awful. Okay. It was awful. I'm not going to play it again. But it was it was it was horrible. That in and of itself is abusive. Uh huh. This is the document that Mr. Depp signed, the divorce agreement, where he says, signed in agreement with his signature, neither party has made false accusations for financial gain. He said that then. He could have fought this then, but he didn't because he knew that her allegations were true. But then he continued his campaign of humiliation. He says, I want her replaced on that WB film. Ladies and gentlemen, the facts are absolutely overwhelming. Oh my God, bro. One time, that's all you have to remember. Mr. Depp simply cannot prove to you that he never once abused Amber. And if you don't, no, you uh -huh. have to return a verdict for Ms. Heard. A ruling against Amber here sends a message that no matter what you do as an abuse victim, you always have to do more. No matter what you document, you always have to document more. No matter, no matter whom you tell, you always have to tell more people. No matter how honest you are about your own imperfections and your own shortcomings in a relationship, you need to be perfect in order for people to believe you. Of course, that's exactly what we Don't meant to say. Don't send that message. That's what he wants you to send. So I'm gonna quickly get to But that's what you're doing to him. You have to find in order to prove or in order to rule for Mr. Depp. You would have to find this is that applicable Ms. to both of them. Made the statements with actual malice. The now fuck? what Mr. Chu didn't tell you is that you have to find this by clear and convincing evidence. So this is much higher than the greater weight of the evidence standard uh -huh. that applies to the other claims, uh, the other elements of the claim. Clear and convincing evidence is evidence that creates in your minds a firm belief or conviction that Mr. Depp has proved this issue. Mm -hmm. So if you believe that Ms. Heard did not act maliciously in writing her op-ed, then you must return a verdict for Ms. Heard, even if you think that you must. he never abused her. I don't think they must. But we can, I'll quickly go over the evidence of this. The, the, the op-ed, you look at the words, it clearly wasn't a hit piece. She visited her attorney, Eric George, who testified by video that his objective was to make sure that there could be no meritorious claim that could be brought about this article relating to defamation. He gave Ms. Heard advice. She affirmatively followed all of it. So you cannot find that Ms. Heard met the clear and convincing evidence standard, given the testimony of Eric George, given the testimony of Terrence Doherty from the ACLU, when Amber went out of her way to ask her lawyer if it was okay. They will say it doesn't matter if she's lying, but even if that isn't, um, they will say that that that's why she did mind. it. But even that isn't true, because, again, uh, keep in mind that if Miss Heard wanted to be malicious toward Mr. Oh Depp, my God, the article would be very different. And I think it's interesting here. We'll Holy talk about shit, Walden man. In a second, but that Amber utilized her attorney, Eric George, to make oh sure my that she God. was following the law. Mr. Depp used his attorney, Adam Waldman, as an attack dog mm -hmm. to defame Amber and to fulfill Depp's promise to her of global humiliation. The last thing I'll touch Succeeded. on before Elaine talks is Mr. Depp's damages. The man's at least consistent in one respect. He blames other people for his problems. Everyone mm -hmm. but himself. You heard us reading the stack of articles dating years before he broke up with Amber, uh, before their marriage broke apart, talking about his problems, talking about the fact that his movies were flops, uh -huh. talking about the fact that he was late to the set, he's unreliable as an actor. A word of reminder here, ladies and gentlemen, is that the only thing Amber ever did that Mr. Depp is allowed to sue her for is the op-ed. He's trying to say, I want to sue her for what she said in 2016. I want to sue her for harm that was caused then. You cannot do that. The only thing you're being asked to decide is, are the words of the op-ed defamatory? Yes. Nothing else. 
any damage to Mr. Depp's career is self-caused. Yeah. Oh. Then think about the testimony that you've heard. Stop hitting the yourself. Business manager, Joel Mandel, said that Depp had issues with drugs and alcohol that damaged his career. Depp sued him. His former mm -hmm. agent, Tracy Jacobs, said he was late to the set and that he used an earpiece. Depp fired her. She said Disney never committed to Pirate 6. Disney's corporate representative, Tina Newman, said that there was no record in Disney's records of this op-ed. This op-ed had nothing to do with it. In fact, no, Catherine she Arnold, didn't. Our damages expert testified that the paper she said she wasn't version aware of, of the article that allegedly they say came out four days after the op-ed was published the but same day as the op-ed that said that Johnny might not be in Pirate 6. The same day, the paper article came out the same day. So the op-ed didn't cause that. Uh -huh. There's no evidence of any contract by Disney for Pirate 6. His agent, Jack Wiggum, couldn't identify a contract. His former agent, Christian Carino, said that there's no contract. He didn't lose anything as a result of this op-ed. Mm -hmm. Anything he's lost is the result of his own choices. You also heard him lie to you. You heard him tell you that this was his first chance to tell his story. But let's break it down, because that's not true. He uh -huh. could have fought the TRO that Amber filed. He could have said, I didn't abuse her, but he chose not to do that. He could have fought her in the divorce case, but he chose not to do that. Instead, he signed the statement saying that no one had falsified any statements. He only filed this suit after he met Adam Waldman, the same Adam Waldman who convinced him to file suit against his former business manager, uh -huh. to file suit against his law firm, and fire them, and blame them for things. For stealing his fucking money. But by the time that Amber wrote the op-ed, Mr. Depp already had had another opportunity to tell his story. He filed a case in the UK against the son for calling him a wife beater. And in that case, he had many of the same witnesses. He was on the stand for parts of five days. And mm -hmm. he got to tell the fact finder in the UK whatever he wanted. Now, it's not the same testimony he told here, because you heard me impeach him about 13 times with his testimony from the UK. But he's had his chances. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to tell Mr. Depp that this was his last chance. Ah, tell him yeah. to move on with his life. Tell him to let Amber move on with hers. Of course. Stand up for the freedom of speech. Stand up for the First Amendment. This trial is about so much more than Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard. You're right. It's about the freedom of speech. Stand up for it, protect it, and reject Mr. Depp's claims against Amber. And now you'll hear from Ms. Coretta Hoft uh, about the counterclaim. Oh my God, dude. So the whole thing was like stand up for freedom of speech. So like he's not even denying that half of the things are true, but he's just hoping that they'll just say, oh, freedom of speech. We're going to let her say what she wants. Like, that's, how is that even an art? That, that is not very good. I'm surprised that they let him just go up there and just kind of misrepresent the testimonials that people gave. Like the woman at Disney didn't say that there I get, were no I, records. I get to say good afternoon. <laughs> She didn't and I know say you've been that. listening to everybody for a long time here, and I echo Ben's uh, very, uh, very uh, strong thank you to all uh -huh. of you for this extreme service and extraordinary service. We really appreciate it. I'm going to go really fast um, and okay. try to go as quick as I can so that you can get a break from us and go make your decision. I know you're probably itching to do it at this point. Okay. But this is very important to us, and we appreciate yeah. your listening, and we appreciate your being here. I'm going to stay on this slide for a moment, and there's something that's very important on this slide that hasn't been brought to your attention by Mr. Depp's team. Another technicality. When you see the actual damages, go down to the last paragraph, if you will. Okay. It says, Mr. Depp cannot recover damages for any harm that occurred after November 2, 2020. Do you all see that? So what Mr. Depp's team got up here and told you through Mr. Chu this morning okay. has nothing to do with this case. He had his chance in the UK. He, the, lo the lawsuit was filed June 2018, I six months before the op-ed. The trial was July 2020. Oh my God. The process ended, according to Mr. Marks, their expert, on November 2, 2020. And his damages stop then. He, he can't get reputational damages. He can't get his legacy back for his children. He can't Isn't get this a bad idea to say? after that day from you. You can't restore his reputation. 
You can't give him anything. They didn't tell you that. This is a bad the argument. The court told you that. And that's a very, very important thing here. He told his story. He had his opportunities. He had his full opportunities to do all of that. And he came in here and lied to you and said oh. he's here to get his reputation back. What do you think? It's he's just there, one bro? of many lies in this case, but it's a really big one. Wait, why would he here be here? we are, six weeks of your time, precious time, six weeks of this court's time, for what? For nothing. Only to go after Amber. That's psychological abuse. He's ah. going after Amber for nothing. Because he wants to put her through this again, the third time. This is so this so is such a back. this is so and bad. She finally has said enough. Enough. Uh -huh. And we're asking you to finally hold this man responsible. He has never accepted responsibility for anything in his life. You've heard it this whole time. He hasn't admitted to anything. He's blamed everybody in the world. No. His agent, his manager, his lawyer, Amber, his friends, everybody. But he's never accepted responsibility for a thing he's done in his life. Ah. But we're asking you to accept, to, to make him accept responsibility, to hold him legally responsible for his actions and to fully and fairly compensate Amber for what he has done by creating this concept of a hoax for the defamation that he has committed. The concept that you of have a hoax. heard so much about that just took wildfire and went off into negative media and has made Amber's life pure hell up to this day. You're welcome. We're asking you to do that, to compensate her, to, to be fair and hold him responsible so he stops. We don't want another lawsuit. We don't want anything else. We want to leave yeah, I think Amber you do alone want and let her get on with her life and raise her child. So let's talk about the counterclaim for a moment. Okay. These are Adam Waldman statements. You've heard Mr. Depp say, well, uh -huh. why, are you, why aren't you suing Mr. This is Waldman? so stupid. That, isn't that typical of Mr. Depp? He doesn't take responsibility for anything. So not, now he's going to blame his lawyer. But he's going to blame the, the guy that said it. Yeah. It's very clear on all three statements, and we'll show them to you in a minute, that he says Adam Waldman, Mr. Depp's attorney, says these things. Attorney, not now, agent. Mr. Why would she Depp say says, that? Mr. Depp says, oh, I didn't even know about those until the counterclaim. Well, we know that's not true because Mr. Waldman's testimony was uh. two months before those statements were made. In February of 2020, Mr. Depp accompanied Mr. Waldman to the Daily Mail, the same place that all three of these statements were published. And he gave him two spliced audio tapes to try to make it look like Amber was the person who was committing the abuse. He went with him. He did a good he job. He knew that Mr. Waldman was doing this. He knew yeah. that Mr. Waldman was launching a campaign against Amber to try to discredit her. And uh -huh. the timing of this, we're talking, the statements now are April and June of 2020. Mm -hmm. The trial is July of 2020. So they're launching an attack to try to discredit Amber before the trial in the UK. That's what happened here. And that is Mr. Waldman, but it's Mr. Depp. The judge gave you three different instructions and you'll all have them. He's acting as his attorney. He has the authority. So Mr. Depp is standing in the shoes of Mr. Waldman. Mr. Waldman is standing in the shoes of Mr. Depp. Michelle, can you please bring Can you stop? The first statement. <laughs> Could just stop, like, oh my God. It says, Amber and her friends in the media use fake sexual violence allegations as both a sword and shield, depending on their needs. They have selected some of her sexual violence hoax facts as the sword, inflicting them on the public and Mr. Depp. That's true. Now, what this statement is meant to imply true. is that Amber is lying about the sexual assaults. Yes, it is. And using them with the media to try to discredit Mr. Depp. Yes. That's the clear implications of this. It is. Now, the, the first part of this is this contradicts Mr. Depp's claims today that the first time you ever heard about the sexual assaults that happened was in this case. It was in the UK case. This is the case that Mr. Depp brought in the UK. Well, that changes and everything. Instead of Amber Heard trying to put this out in the media, she did exactly the opposite. 
Now, this article's not in your evidence, but at least some of you will remember it being shown at one point with the title that said that Amber was successful in being able to treat her allegations of the sexual violence confidential in that proceeding. And it was treated confidential. She did exactly the opposite. She didn't want to tell people this. And you know that. You watched her not. on the stand. It was heart rendering for her to have to do this with the cameras, no less. But what else is false about this statement? It's that there was no false statements of sexual violence. Ben went through all four of them, and I will not repeat them all. You heard the testimony. And interestingly enough, you didn't hear any stories that differed from that with Mr. Depp. He didn't get on the stand and say, you know, no, this didn't happen to at least a couple of them. And he can't in Australia. It's a few, right? Remember anything likely? But if you just look at the pictures of the destruction in that house, I mean, Thanks, imagine painting those canvases and how long that took, and how much hatred and oh rage you have to have for somebody to do something like that. Writing on the walls, tearing up her nightgown, and and wrapping pieces of raw steak and putting it all over the house. Uh, remember that she also testified that he took her clothes and swiped them through all the paint before she left. Um, you know these things happened. Um, with respect to the malice on this one, you know he knows mm -hmm. that he did these things. You know that he knows he was out of it for three days. And that's all that we need to prove for malice. But there's a couple of more facts. He was here. out of it, so he was but malicious. You can find whatever Mr. Waldman's done, and you can find whatever Mr. Depp has done. And both of those are the same for purposes of evaluating the verdict form. They stand in each other's shoes. When you have an agent, and that's what the jury instructions say, you can go with both. What did Mr. Waldman do? There was an article about the sexual violence that he had put from the April one that went into the trial. Amber's testimony, she was sitting near him in the trial, Adam Waldman threw that newspaper down mm -hmm. in front of her defiantly. That's actual malice. Um, and she was quite, quite upset. And you heard her testimony on the stand about that. He was just inflicting it on her. Remember Bruce Whitkin's testimony. Mm -hmm. This was Johnny Depp's best friend for 40 years until he testified truthfully four years ago uh, about the drugs and alcohol and he stopped talking to him. There was a couple of really mm -hmm. important things that Bruce Whitkin said. One of the things he said, he met Adam Waldman once. Adam Waldman said, do you have any dirt on the Mandels? And he said no, and that was it. Then he didn't care. He is an attack dog. All he wants to do is attack and, and put dirt on people. The second, second thing that Whitkin said that I think was pretty instructive was that, that Johnny Depp has deep-seated anger issues that have nothing to do with Amber. He remembered even back when Johnny was married to his sister-in-law, he had extreme jealousy even back then. Uh, and I think that's pretty significant. Remember, Mr. Whitkin also Jealousy was called is not in a few times anger. to intercede in some of these fights between Johnny and Amber when he, when he would become so angry. The last thing I thought he said that was actually pretty important um, was that Kipper and his whole group are a scam. He said, you know, how is it that they can be sober, sober doctors yeah. you know, for these years, years, and he's never sober? You know, he's even taking pot all the time. How can you be sober? I thought that was quite instructive. But in any event, going back to that's the yeah. first statement. Yeah. The second statement. I would statement, feel that way. If you can bring that one up. Taking pot. Oh, before I go there, I want to talk about a few he more things from Mr. Waldman that you have in your, in your to the uh, pocket to be able to find additional malice with him. Remember, he's the one that after the UK trial went to the LAPD with a notebook full of things and tried to get perjury charges against Amber. Smart guy. The LAPD said, we don't investigate those things. Um, but yeah. he then went to a German newspaper and said, Amber is being investigated by the NYPD or the uh, LAPD for perjury. Do you remember that? That's malice. That's showing his intent to do harm to Amber. Uh, he also admitted that he speaks to that umbrella guy, and you'll see that one text in there from the person from TMZ. That umbrella guy is the big lead of Johnny Depp's, you know, positive uh, uh, social media that is putting all the negative out on Amber 
Amber Heard. Well, thanks uh, a lot. I just got ego. Ended up getting knocked out of Twitter because he was abusing Amber. Yeah, wow. Um, so okay. now we'll go to the second counterclaim statement. And that is quite simply this was an ambush, a hoax. They set mm -hmm. Mr. Depp up by calling the cops, but the first attempts didn't do the trick. The officers came to the penthouses, thoroughly searched and interviewed, and left after seeing no damage to face or property. So Amber and her friends spilled a little wine, roughed the place up, got their story straight under the direction of a lawyer and publicist, then placed a second call to 911. Now this is May 21. Now the clear implication here is that they're saying that Amber got together with her friends. They decided they were gonna set Johnny up to be charged for domestic violence. And so they called the police and they tried to make up this whole story, get him arrested, but the police said there's no evidence here. They did. Uh, and went away and they said, darn. And so they spilled wine and they, you know, busted up the place and they called 911. They got, they got advice from a lawyer and a publicist, called 911 and tried again to get Johnny charged. Uh -huh. That's what this, this says. Now we all know that's false and it's heinously false. Um, because, you know, after these events happened, and Ben talked about a little bit of it, but I'll talk about the rest of it, and I'm going to try to do it. Oh, quickly. my God. Um, but, but we all know Amber did everything in her power not to tell them who Johnny was, mm -hmm. not to press charges, not to have him arrested. The exact opposite of this. But what were the facts of May 21st? He comes over. He's already been drinking. He's already high. And he is on a tear about feces in the bed from a month ago. And remember how <laughs> Amber talked about when he gets into these drug-induced things. He gets into these paranoias, oh and he gets some idea in his head, and he just won't, won't let stop. it go. And that was his this it's time. relentless. There's somebody put that feces in the bed a month ago. That was his spin. Yeah. So she gets Io Tillett on, on the phone. He's in New York at the time. He's going, they She's thought, going this is ridiculous. Of course nobody did. And by the way, Boo has this huge problem. Of course it was Boo. You know, he's always doing this. But Johnny just won't get there. So then they She's laugh. doing a good job. That makes fair. him mad. I think she then is. he throws the phone at Amber. It's Amber stupid, screams out and says, right. ow, you just threw the cell phone at me. It hurts. Io says, Amber, get out of there. Johnny gets madder, pulls her hair, grabs her and starts hitting uh -huh. her. So Io gets hold of Rocky Pennington. She comes over as quickly Ow. as she can. She goes and gets in between the two of them. She puts her hands up on his chest. He pushes them down. And then she s continues to stand in between them. And he's screaming loudly ten times, Amber, get the fuck up. Amber, get the fuck up. Amber, get the fuck up. Loudly, loudly. <laughs> Uh, then yeah. his, his bodyguards hear this, they come in, they break it up. Oh That's how that God. happens. But the next part of this, remember Josh Drew, and, and I think Elizabeth Mars was amazing. Still got more gas in the tank. Let's remember go. Remember their testimony. You know, he, for after that, he goes and he has to, you know, she he saved it all up for a, this. You know, path of destruction as he's leaving. So he, you know, bashes up things, and you saw Ben's pictures here on the picture frames, knocks things over as he's going goes down the oh hallway, he's splashing the wine, he gets his bodyguards to let him into penthouse five. Yeah. That's where Josh and Elizabeth are trying to help with Rocky's bead thing for mm -hmm. the next day. And he comes in storming in and he says, get your bitch out of here. <laughs> and he's got the big magnum and he's mad. And Elizabeth is just terrified. She barely I knows love Josh. This. She's met him four times. And she goes ripping out of there as fast as she can. This is and Josh Johnny's impressed. Then what does he do? Uh, he rearranges like, the damn. furniture, or he might have knocked something off, you know, one of one of the countertops or something. That's I think is the, is the testimony of his bodyguards. But you saw the pictures. He went through and trashed that place oh again as he left. Now, the next part of this is the police coming. Please do more voices. Io calls the police. He's in please. New York. He calls the New York Police 911. He's afraid they're not going to get there fast enough. He still remembers December 15 because he came in afterwards mm -hmm. and saw all of the injuries on Amber and all the evidence. Um, and he's terrified that, that Amber's still in there, the police haven't come, and that Johnny's going to kill her. So he calls a friend in LA and says, please call 911. We got to get somebody there fast. So she calls 911. So we have two calls, and you'll see the call summary. And the call summary shows those two calls r really close 
in proximity here. So it's not them, uh-oh, we didn't get the first police officer, so we'll rough up the place and make a second one. Uh -huh. You'll see that they're like eight minutes apart Come uh, on. up there. But it took two hours to dispatch the two different ones, and Amber never even had any get idea your bitch that out the of here. one was coming. God. The first one's come. And, you know, we've talked about it. We've shown you the pictures. We saw the video. The police officers admitted that those pictures could could very much have been what was there that night. Remember, Doc, Officer Hadden, been. it was his first week on the job. Officer Science was three three years on the job at that point. They say, you know, they told Josh Discredited that if she will press charges, if she'll give a name, we can file a report and make an arrest. She uh -huh. wouldn't do it. You did hear from Detective Sandanaga. That's the domestic violence. Bro, don't stop her. I mean, she was just going wild. Oh, my God. Like, bro, she's just f fucking going ham. This is insane. It, it, it's like, yeah, this is, but it's awful. But, like, no, I actually think this is way more, it, it's way more entertaining. You know what I mean? It's like, this is what the, that law firm obviously hires her to do questioning the witnesses who cares about that she has no fucking idea what she's talking about but just give her the fucking podium and let her go on a rant for an hour and she's got voices fucking like acting it out and like fucking she remembers the lines you would call the lines of johnny depp the police officer told him that's why he's you know, impressed the name will make an arrest he definitely said that um oh but my it god uh, uh, she would not. She doesn't need near peace. She would not cooperate. She didn't want. But, <laughs> but Detective Sandanaga, their domestic relations coke, or yeah. domestic violence uh, person, said they should have done an incident report no matter yeah. what, even if they decided there wasn't a crime, because domestic violence it has the cycles. They mm -hmm. come back, and it's good to have the record for the next time that it might happen. So she said they should have under the circumstances, even if they didn't. And she also said that when they put verbal dispute only in those calls. It is a code that they use, and you'll see that it's twice on that call report. So they to to say that's why we didn't write a report. Uh huh. Um, but in any event, whether the police she officers for you know, forgot yeah. about it two months later when they were first asked about it, whether they just decided she's never going to press charges, and you'll see on the call oh report they're God. insisting that to the second set. It doesn't make any difference. The point is, this is still false. Police this report doesn't matter. Still false because Amber did everything but try to press charges against Johnny Depp. So they go away, uh, and the testimony is that Josh and Amber uh -huh. and Rocky cleaned up because they have dogs, so they cleaned up a lot of the glass and the wine and, and those types. They had no idea the second police officers were coming by, and they certainly didn't call them, and they certainly didn't talk. They never talked to a publicist. She did talk to a lawyer who gave her advice, and that's why she wouldn't tell them you know, anything. She said, I'm not going to cooperate at all. Uh -huh. um, so the second one's coming. You saw that. You've got the video cameras in there. And you see, there's no effort by them to try to get now these officers to press charges against Johnny Depp, just the opposite. Josh Drew doesn't want to even let him in the place. Uh, they come through quickly. Everything's fine. They wave. Everything's yep, fine. We saw this. Are they trying to press charges against Johnny? No. They're not trying to do anything. They're trying to get him out of there, which makes this statement 100% false. Was it made with malice? Absolutely. There's nobody ah. that thinks that Amber tried to press charges that night. Johnny knew that. But the other thing that's very helpful and what you should look at yeah, is defendants exhibit 772 and 773. Because once again, the next day, Johnny apologizes to Amber. He says in two different text messages, that 772 and 773, um, he says, my profound apologies in one of them, and my apologies are eternal in the other one. What is he apologizing for the next day on May 22nd? Please if act he didn't out know again. that he did all of those things. And by the way, remember Isaac Baruch even remembers the wine in the hallway. The police, none of the police officers remember the wine. And that's because they're busy and they got a zillion other things going and they didn't remember this call well, two months later when they were asked about it. Why didn't we um, see it? So that's, With that's the, body the next cam footage. Um, so clearly, that's 100% false. Clearly, they knew it. Clearly, there's malice in making that statement. They're trying to suggest that she's manufacturing evidence with her uh -huh. friends to try to frame Mr. Depp. Nothing could be further from the truth okay. on that one. And there's not, she did not want those police officers to press charges. Now, let's go to the third one. Oh, and let's talk about the makeup just for a moment while we're going to the third one. 
this makeup thing, fresh faced, natural. These were Adam Waldman planting these when he when he talked to the ECB people. You know, remember the testimony here. We kept asking, so did you talk to Mr. Waldman? Did you talk to Mr. Waldman? Mr. Waldman was trying to plant in all of these people's Objection, homes. Your Honor. But somehow she wasn't did he approach? You said, God damn it, I'm on a roll. Like you can't stop me again. I feel like maybe maybe Ben is just like he sees whenever she's really kind of building up energy and he just calls an objection for something that'll probably get overruled. But just to just to just to fuck her up, you know? <laughs> yeah, just to just to mess with her head a little bit. Yeah, she got it's funny, man. She gonna forget her lines. I don't think that she will, man. Yeah, she paladin stunned on but yeah, she's got her cooldowns up. So just give her give her a little bit of crowd control, man. Oh my god. She's going wild on this. So I didn't Jesus. say that any of the witnesses admitted that Adam Walton planted that. I'm saying uh -huh. he planted it. That's me arguing the planting. And that's because it's all the same thing. She wasn't Die. wearing any makeup. She was natural. She wasn't wearing a stitch of makeup. Every one of them says it. It's the exact same thing. Well, why would you say that? She's an actor. She's not going to go outside her house, you know, without putting makeup on. And if she has Unless bruises, she goes to the why on earth, when she's been covering them up for four years, why on earth would she not put makeup on so that she would cover those up? Then ex explain the courthouse. Why on earth would courthouse. she not want to cover up those bruises? It makes no sense. But you know what, you Unless guys saw Unless she knew her, that TMC would be there. Um, you saw Amber on the stand. There were days where she didn't wear eye makeup. A lot of people think that she's not wearing makeup when she doesn't have mascara and, and eyeliner on. She has different looks, and some of them are with eye makeup, and some of them are without. And people misunderstand, especially people that aren't that good at makeup, and a lot of men, frankly, um, go, oh, that's then she probably doesn't have makeup. And that's, that's where that mistake that's happens. That's fair. That's but fair. But you heard her testimony, and you heard her makeup artist te testimony saying she doesn't go out of her room without so concealing no, but it's and foundation. True. Knows she knows how to put true. these things in. And you saw Defendant's Exhibit 155, and you'll have the actual thing in there. That's the type of palette she used. And she was very adept uh -huh. at telling you what color she puts on for the different days of bruises. This is a woman who, for four years, did everything she could to cover up anybody knowing anything about this abuse. Do you honestly think she's just going to walk around for the week with her bruises exposed? Of course she's not. She only did it for the one day she went to the courthouse? Let's did go to she the said she didn't one. know TMZ would be there? What an interesting coincidence. And this is... What a very interesting the coincidence hoax. there. Wow. He says, we've reached the beginning of the end of Ms. Hurd's abuse hoax against Johnny Depp. Mm -hmm. Now, the, 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 obviously, the defamatory meaning of that is that Amber's creating an abuse hoax. Yes, But there is, is no abuse hoax. I don't need to tell you all of the evidence because Ben did a beautiful job of just taking you through all of those different things. But I will point out a couple things for you. Okay. And that is, remember Bonnie Jacobs, the therapist. Dr. Hughes and Dr. Spiegel testified about Bonnie Jacobs' notes. And remember oh. that I was holding that. You well, that makes it them, way more credible. they credible. testified that they went through them. Dr. Hughes testified that she also spoke with Bonnie Jacobs. This feminist and Spiegel? contemporaneous notes from 2011 oh, when she first started seeing Amber. It must be true. And the abuse is documented in those notes is what Dr. Hughes testified to. They start in 2012. Two both clowns physical make one extra. Objection, Your Honor. That Dr. Hughes it, It's just like, yeah. It, it, it's like, how is this like, both of those people were just like the most uncredible clowns that you could possibly imagine. And this is what they do. It is like, as you see, it's the foundation of lies built upon lies. So it's like they just repeat a lie and then they repeat another lie that's contextualized by the first one or it's built on top of the first one. And then they have like a big house of cards and then they're like, well, see how high it is? I mean, there's no way this could only be one card, right? Yeah, that's it. Oh my God. Do you always want to keep smiling? Well, I think that it's probably entertaining for him as an actor to see her just completely fucking go wild like this. It's probably, I mean, like, the truth is, it's probably entertaining in a way. You know, to, to see this? Like, I mean, I'll be honest. Like, if she had acted like this, 
more throughout the entire uh, trial. It would have been more entertaining, you know, like whenever, because there were a few times where she'd use, like, she'd try to, like, lower her voice to sound like Johnny, Johnny Depp, and it was funny, right? It was really stupid, but it was funny, and that's why it was good. But, like, yeah, she just kind of stopped doing that, and it's like, oh, man, that's too bad. Oh, my God. Remember when she did the Dark Knight voice of him? Yeah, exactly. That was great. And uh, makeup and body language is acting poorly? Well, I don't think so. I mean, like, and it's not even about acting poorly. It's about trying to act, right? Just popping off. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I find to be interesting, you know? 15 Minutes of Fame was funny, too? Yeah, it was. Uh, that That's it. And uh, saw more skill in her than in Amber, let's be honest. I, I, I wonder if that's what's going through his head right now. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised at all. I feel like she made such a stupid mistake by trying to talk about... I'll talk about it later. So Dr. Hughes specifically characterized... I'll give it time. Dr. Jacob, Dr. It's okay. Jacob's notes as reflecting both contemporaneous physical abuse Fuck. and sexual abuse throughout that time mm -hmm. period. Dr. Spiegel confirmed that later and said the same. Oh, well, then it's right. I asked Dr. Curry if she had reviewed those notes. She said yes, but she had no comment. And she Your Honor, objection. That, that was in there. Now, there she is now she's getting mad good job keep keep her on the keep her on the ropes man keep her on the ropes and, and so i thought she did a really bad job of talking about how much money amber heard would owe to johnny depp and like contextualizing it inside of a certain amount of time frame because in my opinion i think that's talking past the sale that's like whenever a car dealership asks you what color you want the car in like, it was just, it was such a, like, she shouldn't have said that. That's not how I would have sold it at all. It's a bad idea. She said she had reviewed them, but she had no comment, but she also didn't mm -hmm. deny that those were in there. Amber Heard testified that she went back, and because of Bonnie Jacob's notes, she realized for the first time that the abuse started much earlier than she even realized before. She always had thought yeah. that it, it, it had started in 2013. When she went back and saw Bonnie Jacobs' notes, she realized that it had started much earlier, and she was very embarrassed by that. Now, significantly, you remember that she testified about how she uh -huh. went, she was first called upon to actually detail all of her events of abuse in yes. February of this year. And she went through and took the notes, took photos, took, you know, she took everything she had, calendars, everything, put it all together, and you heard about at least 64 pages mm -hmm. of detailed accountability of that. And Mr. Depp's team has been able to not refute any of that. I remember they tried to impeach her and say, well, you didn't say that. She said, yes, I did, on page 64. Remember that? It was a very, very difficult process for her because there was an awful lot of it. And Absolutely. And she put it in great detail. Of now, course. 100. Let's talk for a moment about the motive. Mm -hmm. uh, they have said that she has created this whole hoax, and I think Ben's done a nice job of showing how that can't possibly have been. Of course. But what would Amber Heard's motive be for creating the hoax, or creating any of this, or making any of this up? What That's could a big it possibly be? They call her a gold digger, right? But she, she obviously couldn't have done it for the money, because first of all, remember the testimony mm -hmm. of Laura Wasser, the divorce attorney. She said that California is a no-fault state and community property. So Amber doesn't have to have an abuse. She, she, could have, she could have divorced him for irreconcilable differences, for abandonment, for adultery, for anything. She doesn't need an excuse. And she gets 50% of whatever he earns during the time of the marriage. Right. Unless they had a prenup or a postnup. The testimony from Michelle Mulrooney was that Amber completely cooperated with the prenup and the postnup, but it was Johnny Depp who, and you've already heard from Ben, he called her up and fired her. He didn't want a postnup or a prenup. So she's entitled to 50% of everything he, he, owned, he uh, earns during that time. Now we have Plaintiff's Exhibit 936 in evidence, and look at page 69. Okay. It says how much he made in 2015. It was 43 million. Remember Dr. Mr. Money. Spindler, Depp's expert, who said that he made 22 million in 2016. So you got 65 million dollars. Amber was entitled to 31.5 at least. That doesn't include all the back ends from, for example, Pirates 5. She was entitled to that money. 
Uh -huh. So she didn't need to say anything. She could have just said, I don't like you anymore. I don't like the color of your hair. I'm going to divorce you. Your Honor, gonna we're going to object again. Not, there it is. Okay, let's see it again. Well, it, it's like she literally sent him a letter before all this stuff went public, extorting him for more money, a, a car, and three of his houses. So, like, to say that is just so silly to me. Yeah, it's just so fucking silly to me. That's what's going to happen. I mean, like, God damn, man. Like, yeah, she really worked hard for that. Well, no, it's like that's just the way it goes, right? But, like, it's not, like, I don't think it's about the money for jo Johnny Depp doesn't really, probably doesn't give a fuck about that, right? It, it's just about the fact that she's doing this and, and then saying it's not for the money. And, and I think that if it's not for the money, then why didn't you give the money away to the charities, well, I know why. It's because it was for the money, partially. It, it wasn't really just for the money, but the money was like, you know, now that we put it into context, it, it definitely matters. It's important. Let's bring that up, too. Uh, exactly. She didn't want her horrible audios to leak. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, she didn't want to look bad. I, I think that fundamentally, it's like she obviously was looking at, like, having a career for a long period of time. So obviously that kind of made sense that she wouldn't really care that much about it because she'd want to look good. Uh, that's what it is, man. And it fucked up. And Lynn's going to be the last person from the other side and she'll have such a bad impression. They don't have time. Um, I, I don't really think so. I mean, I feel like she's doing as good of a chance as she can. Like, I, I think that this is the best that they possibly can do. And they're just, in my opinion, I feel like these are half court shots, Hail Marys. You're just trying to, you know, like close your eyes and fucking let Jesus take the wheel. We're going to go and try to just assert the most crazy shit possible. And then maybe one person believes it. And if that happens, we win. You know, that's basically it. You know, it, it's like the whole idea that somebody's like, you only need to sell one thing for a million dollars. You just need to find one dumb guy. So First Amendment. Yeah. The math, Throwing shit at the wall, opening it, one thing sticks. Yeah. What does she take? Seven million. What does she do with the seven million? She Keeps gives it, it to charity. Or she intends to give it to charity. Now, they make much ado about the pledge versus donation. But both the corporate designees for ACLU Mike, yeah. and for Children's Hospital said donation and pledge are interchangeable. You know, these are pledges. The ACLU corporate designee said you typically do pledges because of the tax benefits. And that's uh -huh. what she said. She pledged it over a period of time because of the tax implications to it and because mm -hmm. she was getting paid over the time. But 13 now, months would be two tax seasons and there was only one donation. That the first one was mm -hmm. on behalf of Mr. Depp's uh, business manager, Mr. White, actually mm -hmm. sent the letters with the 100000 for each of those. That was the initial ones. Um, he was trying to take credit for those. And in fact, Tax fraud? both no, the ACLU you. and Children's Hospital got confused and gave the credit to Mr. Depp, not to Amber, for those. Then yeah. she made payments to both. And Elon Musk also made payments to both for 500000 each, which she didn't count to her pledge. But they helped yes, those organizations. Did. At the end of the Wait, day, yes, she she's made a million dollars in pledge in payments to them. But then she got sued here and hasn't been able to because she spent $6 million in attorney's fees. That is unrefuted. She still intends to pay those pledges, honor those pledges. And she said that throughout. And I elicited from both the ACLU and from Children's Hospital. They haven't expired. She can pay them whenever she wants to. And she fully intends to. What do you to. think they're going to say no? she has to get out from under this first. Now, who would, accuse, who would blame a woman for giving a million dollars in, in charitable donations. Who would do that? That sounds like psychological abuse to me. Now, Mr. Mandel testified that He's Johnny misrepresenting Depp is not it intentionally. Person, and he hasn't written any big checks for him. Mm -hmm. Mr. Depp got on the stand and says he does it unanimously, uh, uh, anonymously, but Mr. Mandel would have been the one writing the checks, and he says that didn't happen. Um, now, let's go to damages because I promised you I was going to go pretty fast here. Um, there's a few different types of damages, but one of the things that the court has talked to you about, she, she, she told you that because we have defamation, it's invidious, and therefore it's very difficult to prove these. And mm -hmm. so these damages to business reputation, inconvenience, embarrassment, yeah. 
are presumed. You don't have to prove those damages. And one great example of that is the testimony from Mr. Hamada at Warner Brothers. He didn't want to have to get in the middle of all of this with Aquaman 2. They haven't even released it. So he didn't read anything in preparation for his deposition. He didn't talk to anybody before his deposition. He said that he, he tried to do technicals and say, no, we never terminated her contract. But, oh, yeah, we did tell her we were probably not going to renew her option. Um, and then what? they did change the script. But She's going to say he's an idiot? Script, and, yes, they did change it. Then he said, um, you know, no, we never negotiate salaries. But, oh, yeah, we did negotiate, renegotiate Jason Momoa's and Gal Gadot's. So he just doesn't want to admit to any of these things. But what came out in Hamada's deposition, and I hope you were listening carefully to this, was the email from James Wan, the director, and, Jane, and uh, Jason Momoa, her co-star, who said they guarantee if they are in the film, she is going to be Mira in the film. Why would they do that unless they thought Warner Brothers was being unfair to her? And why did she get uh. almost knocked out of it? Because of the defamatory statements. When they came out, they took on a life of their own. Ron Schnell, oh the, my the young God. Sheldon, I call him the Doogie Hauser, uh, our, our expert on IT, took you through and tracked He's how stupid. they tracked the defamatory statements, the language from the defamatory statements, how that went through the social media and the negative social media. Uh, and it kept going and kept going. And he tracked all the way until a few months ago over 2.36 million negative tweets, negative Instagrams, negative social media's comments about Amber that relate specifically to the, in, the information that was in those three defamatory statements. 2.4 it now. It took on a life of its own. They started to get Amber fired from mm -hmm. Aquaman 2. They yep, have continued the to this day. They have followed her everywhere. Everybody has stopped wanting her. L'Oreal won't use her, yep. even though they've kept her on from that time. She lost three different opportunities that were being discussed with her. The most significant part of that, though, is that Aquaman was the biggest blockbuster ever for DC Films. True. It was the biggest. It was over a billion dollars. True. This was her opportunity for her star. Even the no. experts from Mr. Depp admitted this was her blockbuster. This was her mega. No. But what happened instead? As she's going through, as it's quoting. coming out, and in that 16 months they were going, well, nothing happened. Yeah, lots happened. She was had three different films she was discussing. She had, she got the L'Oreal contract. She, she got the stand. All of those things were happening because of Aquaman, and then everything shut down. She wasn't allowed to do publicity for the stand. She wasn't uh -huh. allowed to, uh, she, she you know, hasn't been allowed to do anything for L'Oreal. She got shut mm -hmm. down from her charitable organizations. She, oh. she ended up not getting the Amazon movie. And then they gave her a hard time about Aquaman 2. And instead of the career trajectory of the other comparators, who all went way up, and by the way, all the experts admit that that career tra trajectory went well for all the rest of them, and she's the only one that didn't have it. Yeah. And the reason is because of the defamatory statements. Oh, that's the reason. So you have some very good information oh. to help you on, on ascertaining those damages. Now, Jessica Kovacevic, um, and I don't know if you that's remember why. her, she was her agent. She said, Michelle. everybody just stop talking. The producers don't want her, yep. the directors don't want her, nobody wants her. We just can't get the traction, and we should have been able to get the traction, and they say it's because of those statements. So Catherine Arnold uh, gave you uh, some good estimates on this, and she gave you a very good basis for it. And she didn't use Jason Momoa's or Gal Gadot's or the others. She used Amber's, but used those comparators to show that they got big movies, that they got commercial opportunities, that they got these TV opportunities, but she used the base that Amber had. So she used the four million from the Aquaman, the, the movie three. Eight, the she 16, used the, the stands, the you know, how million. much they got paid per movie. And what she estimated on those, and she went through those details, is that if you took that for the last two years and projected into the next three to four, that it's between 47 and 50 million dollars that she could have had instead of her star being completely extinguished. And that's what's happened to her. The emotional distress damages are even more extreme here. Um, and that is because uh -huh. Hughes testified extensively about the PTSD and what she Oh goes my to. God, and $50 every time million. She's dollars. A liar, every time these hoax things come up, everything, it causes her to relive all of it. She talks about the panic attacks, the nervousness, the intrusive thoughts, the nightmares, all of the, the, the sweats, the, you know, the anxiety that goes through all of this. Uh, it's, it's significant, but probably the most compelling testimony that you could ever hear was from Amber yesterday and, and when she took the stand before. 
It has destroyed her life. This has consumed yep. her. She's getting death threats. Her daughter, they're threatening to put her daughter in a microwave, for God's sakes. She can't oh, get away from they. it. It's everywhere. This media, the social media that has just taken off, has just consumed her life. As she said, I'm a human being. No human being should be put through this. Mm -hmm. Now, Johnny Depp sued for a hundred million or for fifty million dollars, and we sent a message back saying, "Fine, then we're going to sue for a hundred million because look at what you've done to her." We're not we're not asking you to give a hundred million dollars. We're asking you to just look at the damages in this case and just be fair and reasonable in whatever okay. you determine by Seven, following the evidence and the instructions. Seventeen dollars. We do ask that you fully and fairly compensate. Amber for everything that she's been through, both Fine. in terms $18. of reputation and emotional distress. Okay. The very last point is punitive damages, and you surely have those in this case. We've asked for 350000 for the punitive damages, and we would ask that you award that. <coughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Holy shit. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to do, um, we still have rebuttal closing arguments. But I can guarantee you that the rebuttal closing arguments will be done combined within 45 minutes. But what I want to do is go okay. ahead and uh, let you have your lunch. Food. Um, Food. And then after lunch, we'll come back in the courtroom, have the rebuttal closing arguments, and then we'll submit the case to you. Okay? All right, so go ahead and have your lunch. Uh, do not discuss the case it's with each food other time. and the outside research, okay? It's food time. Bro, she just went off. Like, I was actually kind of surprised. Like, she just went fucking wild, man. That woman was going crazy.